Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, back this time with the Neo Geo CD. Like lots of videos, my opening comment is, I've been meaning to do this for quite a while. This was uh, sent to me back in spring, I think. It came from Furtec. So this is an optical drive emulator here for the Neo Geo CD. I've got the 64GB uh, uh, SD card here for it. Hopefully I can fit most, if not all, of the collection of games on there. You stick them in the form of like, you know, the ISO, the original disc image, the CD image. So I thought we'd have a go at installing this. Now this is one of the earlier revisions. You can see I've not even opened this. It arrived back in, uh, let's say, spring. We've got a, what looks like a flash ROM there, some transceivers and things, and something here, maybe a little support in MCU or something. We'll have a look at that in a second. Uh, you can see it's got a PLCC socket here, so this will fit over the top of the 68,000 CPU that's on the motherboard there. And you've got, I think, the audio DAC connections come in here. I think that's, yeah, it's a CDDA, so it's CD Digital Audio. So you've got three, three pins go there. I think it's probably in and out, because that one looks like CD uh, DA as well, actually. So yeah, that's how that works, you know, three in, three out. And obviously this replaces the CD-ROM drive. So, uh, now there's two different versions of it, three different versions of this, I think, actually, maybe even four. The version I've got here is version C, I think. Uh, I'll show you in a second, I can't really see from that board, it's on the other board. But what we'll need to do is remove the drive, and then the SD card will fit somewhere here. On the later revisions, you can actually leave the drive connected and have it like a pass-through, so that it allows you to still use the CD as well as the SD card from this, if that makes sense, which gives you compatibility with your original discs without an issue, and then you use the SD card. But I think the SD card on that one, you would uh, I'm not sure whether you'd unplug it from this little thing here and mount it on the back. So uh, as I say, I think mine is a slightly earlier version, so I think I've got to remove the drive. It's one reason why I've kind of been postponing this for a while. I wasn't sure whether I should uh, go ahead and try and purchase the later version, or whether I should try and fit this in here, but I'll be honest, I've not got that many discs. I mean, I've got one or two originals. Am I ever gonna use the, the drive here? I think when I get the SD loader in there, I would use this system a lot more because I'll have all my games, you know, just being able to select from the menu really quickly. So I don't think there's any reason to, to worry about removing the drive. So the Neo CD gets a hard time versus the AES and the MVS. You know, you get obviously much faster loading times on the AES and MVS because it's on a cartridge. You've also got more assets there, so it's you know you've got more sprites, more animation, etc. Some of the CD versions get a hard time because they're reduced. You know, things are cut down. You've got little loads in between sections and things like that. But with something like the SD loader, it's going to be much faster at loading. But one of the other benefits that people don't often mention to do with the Neo CD is you get arranged music tracks so what i mean by that is you know uh, bespoke music tracks that have been developed just for the cd version that are enhanced that sound a lot better uh, with more variation in uh, some of the tracks and things and uh, yeah some additional artwork in places as well certainly for the loading screens and things but i have noticed some differences and there are one or two audio tracks on some games that i think wow that's way better than the mvs or as version and of course the other benefit of fitting a device like that into this system will be we no longer need to change the discs you you know not risking any wear and tear on your discs that's got a hair on it look but you know it's very easy to scratch discs you drop it you could catch it on the tray so you're going to preserve your discs you're also going to preserve the life of your laser and it's just convenience you've got all your games in one place the full collection without having to change discs and go and find the disc and all that sort of stuff but also the fast load times as you'll see and if you want to see the install manual just follow that uh, code there on your phone he's got a really nice web page here so it's hard to get the reflection off there but you can just about see it supports the front loader the top loader that's what we covered in this video doesn't support the cdz yet but maybe Looking at the instructions here to install this, uh, there are three different revisions actually, C, D and E. I think mine's a C. And if we go into the instructions for that, you'll see, and this is really nice artwork here. Whoever's produced the pixel artwork for these here, I hope that's clear. Yeah, I've zoomed you in a bit there just so you can see the detail. These are fantastic. He's done an amazing job. I don't know whether he's commissioned this artwork here to somebody else or whether he'd done it himself, but look at the detail, it's uh, fantastic. I think the only thing I struggled with 
following this was the bit about the CD digital audio. Hopefully from my video it's clear what you need to do, but by the time you get to this bit down here, uh, it could be a bit clearer in terms of explanation about what goes where. You know, this is the uh, that back board there, as you'll see, uh, and you need to detach the cable from that and attach the cable to the SD loader. But because mine won't reach, as you'll see, it confused me a little bit. But the artwork is amazing. It's a very detailed guide there. I love it. So I've removed the four screws from underneath. You can see I stuck a sticker on this when we fixed it actually, Samurai Slowdown. Yeah, because uh, obviously it's quite a lot slower than if you were to play from something like an AES. I forget what's uh, holding this on here now. It's the ribbon, isn't it? Yeah, you can tell I've not been in there in quite a while. I've forgotten about this ribbon here. I think we'll just disconnect it there for the moment. So with our four screws out from underneath, we need to literally remove everything here to get to the motherboard. So, you know, the screws on this board here and the screws on this backboard here as well. And then remove this uh, shield in here. So I've got those two boards out. Obviously, you have to unclip these two connectors here. The one over here, disconnect your ribbon here from the controller board at the front. There are two screws on the back here that also hold that board and as well as the ones along the top. And then the final thing now is to continue removing the screws to go through this shielding. And as I showed in the previous videos on this, it's conductive. I'll stick a link up there. In a previous video, we fixed the power supply for this as well. There we go, so all the screws are out. The shielding this should now just carefully lift up and off like that. So I think one of the first things we need to do is the BIOS here says so their mask system. This is the system ROM, the BIOS. Uh, lift the uh, pin along here for is it chip select? It might be. I think it's chip select. The chip select pin. We need to lift it so that it's no longer connected to the trace. Then we need to solder a wire to the trace and a wire to the pin, and those will go to the SD loader board. I'm not sure if it's those two pads there. Oh, it's these here. It's those two. I think. Yeah, those are the two pads A and B. So the idea being is that this can provide, I think via the uh, flash ROM on here, it can provide its own custom BIOS. So when you power it on, it will boot using that. But I think you may have the option to enable the uh, onboard one. I'm honestly not sure. Maybe this is, this is never used. Uh, I'm not too sure about that, but we'll find out that as we progress. So uh, I'm trying to think what to do next. I think we'll do that next. We'll lift that pin, solder the two wires on, as far as I'm aware, the only other thing apart from clipping this onto the CPU, which is here, I think, uh, I'm not sure if it goes that way around, is the uh, digital audio. So, you know, these three pin things here, you know, an input and an output, we need to take from the motherboard to here and then from here to wherever. You'd need something to go from here to here and then from here, I'm not sure which way around this go, to the backboard. So I'm going to need an extra connector of three pins, aren't I? Some people desolder that connector there and just solder three wires. I'm hesitant in doing that because then I'll have to, uh, you know, if I ever want to fit the drive back in here, I'll have to fit a connector again. I'm not sure what to do. We've got to see if we've got any suitable connectors. I might make a wire up or something. While we're here, I'm just going to inspect this. I don't know if you can see this. We've got some corrosion or something just there. Just a little bit. Yeah, there's a tiny, tiny bit of corrosion there. Um, now, I'm not sure whether that was something that I just missed when I did the repair or what. I mean, we'll get a little bit of flux on there. And I'm just going to use a little bit of solder braid uh, because the copper's come off the traces as well just from wiping that gently. And uh, we'll just uh, reflow that. I perhaps, uh, won't be able to show you all of this because I cannot see what I'm doing from this distance. But I will uh, show you in a minute. Let's just tin those traces up in the first instance because they're looking a little bit uh, coppery. Can't get a grip on the thing. Yeah, it's just there where the fiberglass pen has just uh, made them go a bit coppery. That's it. And then I'll just uh, reflow here with a bit of uh, magnification. I'll show you once that's done. Yeah, so there we go. That was uh, kind of unexpected though. I didn't expect to be uh, needing to solder anything else apart from the mod. It's got nothing to do with the mod. It's just something that I think was worth doing while we're here. But hopefully you can see that looks nice and shiny that bit now. Whereas before it was looking uh, pretty bad actually. Two pins there in particular looked very corroded. You can see how much duller these ones are but they aren't corroded. It's just a bit of uh, oxidization with age. 
So I can't really get much closer than that. Uh, anyway, it should be okay. I'm going to have to come in from the other side here. So I'll just get a little bit of uh, flux on there. I've marked that pin. Yeah, there we go. We don't need a lot. So I'm going to try and use the probe here because I haven't got anything finer. And let me see. Yeah, I can just get in at the back of it and just lift it. Now it will bend a little bit if I'm not careful. Right, let me just try the other way around just to alternate a bit. Eating the pad there. There we go, it's lifted. So hopefully you can see just with a bit of alternating around there. He's, he's bent slightly to the left there, but I can just straighten that out. So we're on macro there, and I'm doing this deliberately at an angle. Can you see it's floating above the pad? Uh, if I move it around that way a bit, you can see it a bit better, maybe. Rotate it around that way. So you can see it's nice and straight, and it's not touching the pad. So we now need to join a wire from the pad and from the pin. Both those wires want to go to the uh, loader board. So we'll get the loader board in position next. So here's our 68,000 CPU. It's marked there, pin 1, on the silk screen. And uh, if I just tilt the board, it might not focus very well, but there's a dot there. So that's pin 1. And if we look at this inside its packaging, can you see this arrow here? That wants to go towards pin 1. So it wants to go like that, there. Wear an ESD wrist strap uh, while you're doing something like this, but uh, I've just done the next best equivalent, which is to just ground myself and avoid trying to move while I'm uh, doing this. So it looks uh, nice and tidy in there. Let's uh, line pin one. So pin one there. And that wants to just push over there like that. That's it. That's on. Can you see? That is about as flat and flush as it's going to go there. So that's that bit done. So this is where the free wire comes in. As I say, solders the pad and then to, I think it, the way you do with this is you go from the board to A and from the chip to B. I'll check that in a minute just in case I'm wrong. But uh, that's all I'm going to do. If I uh, try and find the end of this, I don't know how he's done this. It's, oh, it's wrapped around up there. So I'll try and film this for this one, but uh, it's not going to be easy. Let me just uh, start by adding a little bit of solder to the pad there. I've lifted the pin almost straight upwards actually, so it's uh, you know it's a long way away from the pad. But anyway, hopefully we'll see what I'm doing. I'm not sure I can. There we go. So I had a little bit of solder to the pad. Hold it in position, is that on? Yeah, there we go. That's nice and sturdy. So rather than just uh, pull it this way, what I'm going to do, and I think he suggests this on his uh, guide actually, is to fold it like that and then maybe glue it on top of here. I'm not going to glue it because it's, it's not going to go anywhere. And uh, I'm not going to be pulling on it because I'm just going to be rooting it there now and then cutting it off. Does that make sense? You know, it's, it's got a little curl look. And I could always just flatten it down a little bit this way so it's out of the way of the pin. The pin is still there, stuck up. And the motherboard connection there goes to A. So we'll just have a little bit of flexibility there. I don't want it to be uh, super tight. Trim that off there. This is that sort of wire that when you eat uh, the end with a little bit of solder and flux, it melts back a little bit. So you don't even need to strip the uh, end off, just heat it a little bit. A bit of gentle persuasion. Uh, Got to be careful not to drip large blobs of solder on this board when you're doing that kind of thing. Uh, so handily it's already got a bit of solder on it, but we'll just add a little bit of fresh just to get a little bit of flux on there as well. There we go. Clean the tip. So as I say, this way is going to go to A. I'm sorry if it's going blurry while I do that. And then just make sure that's reliable it is. There we go, that's our two wires joined up. I think I'll use a bit of hot glue on this later. You do want to secure these though, because they'll just come off really easily if you're not careful. But anyway, that's tape just for now. We'll hold that in place. Uh, I've ordered some 3-pin micro JST, which I think has got the right pitch for this. Little cables that have got the connector. So, in theory, I could just join two of them up with a bit of heat shrink joining the two. And then I could either plug it from here to here or here to wherever, you know, and get around that that way. Will mean I have to take the lid back off, but I won't bore you with that. I'll just show you. I'll cut to uh, having the lid exposed again at the end. So the next thing I want to do here is just try and route the wires. Before that, I want to try and get these into these things here and just work out how the distance. Because on other Neo Geo CD boards, this sits that way up. 
which means these are super near to the area here and it also means that this is further up here which might make it easier to fit I don't know so we could have a difficulty fitting this it might be quite difficult getting the lid back on it's going to fold and come up through the hole here I think and then it's going to be like there bear in mind this is going to be on the lid so it might be a case of you have to put the lid down you know screw this in screw this into the lid I'll show you in a minute in place of the drive and then try and hold it at the right angle you know tongue at the right angle and try and clip it on with the lid quite uh, tight there so uh, anyway let's see how I get on I'll just see if I can work out to get these in um, the blue bit goes up like this but it's not one of the ones where you lift anything on it or anything like that but it's going to be incredibly difficult to do because there's no clearance if you sort of line it up like that how would you get any kind of meaningful pressure on it to get it in there oh there you go yeah easier said than done so uh, that's one side done uh, and that one's going to go that way I think and then the drive uh, I think we'll do what we'll do next is remove the drive fit this in there so that I can sort of work out which way around this is going to go I'm suspecting it's going to sit like that inside the uh, inside of the lid and then this is going to have to yeah so is it going to be too tight I don't know it might just reach so let's just take the uh, drive and the PCB out completely here so hopefully this lot should come out now yeah there we go three mounts there yeah it's gonna go like that isn't it I think you might need to bend this up because I'm wondering, yeah I think you do, I think you have to bend this about 45 degrees like that because otherwise when this is in this position here if you look at the top here, look here's our SD you're not going to be able to get to it and you can see what I mean better if I just hold it in place here, look it's flat, you know trying to get the SD card in and out of there would be a nightmare so it would appear that you've got to bend this I don't like doing this please don't break up like that yeah, there we go. Maybe a little bit further than that. Let's, uh, let's just test that out. Yeah, you can see we're not far off there now. I think that'll be okay, actually. I might need to do a bit more, because otherwise it's going to catch on this lip here. Yeah, I think you're nearer to 45 degrees. I'm trying to stay away from the metal part on the edge and just lift the PCB, because... Let's try that. That should be uh, almost perfect, I think. Yeah, there you go. Just make sure it doesn't interfere with that. Yeah, you may need to bend it back down a bit afterwards. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll go with that, I think. So I guess we may as well screw that in. I'll just uh, pull this out. Now I know how to get that in. I like this PCB. How has he got it like that, where it's like, uh, you know, it's the, the colour of it is coloured here, but not on the edges. It's, uh, I'm curious about that. I'm curious how he's managed to get that effect. Have I got the right screws here? I think I have. I don't remember short screws for this part. No, I think they're all the same length. Yeah, I thought I had the wrong screws there. I'm glad I checked, because there's no way those other screws would have gone in without damaging the uh, threads there. It's the ones with the big washers, as you can see here, that go around the uh, the buffer parts on the uh, optical drive. Those rubber spongy suspension things. So that's that bit done. Let's just test that out now. Yes, yeah, so let's just try that out for size. Does it go upside down? I'm not sure which way around that goes, actually. I think it goes the other way, actually. Yeah, that is the right way. Because it may stick up too far now, that's the thing. No, I think it's alright. That's touching. Yeah, I think that's fine. So, we can get our SD card out of there. So, let's try getting that in there. Now, anticipating this being even harder than the other bit, because I can't press down here, we've got things underneath it, look. That's sort of in the right position, I just need to somehow... You see, this is the problem, I don't know. I need, like, some super fine pliers or something. The problem with pliers, if you're not careful, you can uh, crease it. 
you know you can't get under it oh, that's the problem you see that chips in the way there so oh, I don't know I'll report back in a minute yeah the edge there this blue edge here if you can kind of grip it which oh there you go you can see I've managed to pull that in is it straight it kind of doesn't look it there we go that's gone in there yeah I think that's in so yeah be careful not to damage that so the final thing here obviously apart from revisiting the the CD digital audio thing which I'm not too worried about this stage is to try and size up this here where does this need to go now you know it's gonna is it gonna come out of here it might need a little twist in it to put it the right angle yeah see it's gonna do it's gonna need to sort of fold this way and then that way a little bit sort of uh, let's just see if we can uh, work out what I need to do here so it's going to need a little crease don't squash it completely or you may break it and then it's going to need to go back this way again I think like that, let's just uh, check that well it wants to be in line with that connector doesn't it almost so it wants to go again Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm wondering actually if we could just fit, feed it like that and then pull it straight up. That might be the easiest thing. Let's, let's try that. Let's put a crease here. 45 degrees there, just slightly. And then feed it out here. Yeah, let's try that for size. Yeah, so there we go. So I'm going to reassemble it, we'll try it. We're going to be lacking CD, DA, not too worried about that at this stage. So I've literally just got a couple of screws holding each of these boards in. We've got all our connectors back on, apart from the CD, DA one here, which is uh, not going to be doing anything at the moment. We're going to be lacking that audio, as I've mentioned numerous times. So the final thing here is to try and connect up this here to there and fit it in place. Oh, there we go, that was pretty hard. I'll show you exactly how hard later, because I will be going back in there. Anyway, let's go and uh, plug it in and try it and see if it works. So when you first get one of these, I think you need to update the firmware. I don't think there's any firmware on it, or the firmware that is on it is some sort of test firmware. I could be wrong. So you download the firmware, and as it says here, you rename it to NSDLZZZZ. I think there's a, four numbers there, normally, on the version of firmware you've downloaded, and you replace the numbers with 4Zs.wad. Uh, and stick that into the root of your SD card. Stick the SD card in, so we'll do that now, and we'll power it up. So I'll now take that SD card and uh, stick it in. I think it goes upside down. There we go, it's in. Um, switch it on. Now hopefully it will update the firmware. Now I've got no indication because I can't see any of the LEDs, you know. There's no LED visible on the outside. You can do a mod so that the power LED shows uh, various things. You know, you put like a three colour, you know, a multicolour LED in there. It's got like three connections, you know, so you can have multiple colours. And it should uh, signify there whether it's uh, doing a firmware update or whether it's loading from the SD card or what. But I'm just going to have to just leave this now and assume that this is doing a firmware update. My understanding is it takes about 30 to 40 seconds. Wow, there we go, so it has worked. Thank goodness for that. So let me turn the volume up. I did hear some sound there. I'm just not sure we've, we've got no sound at all. I've got metal slug. Let's uh, just hit A. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we've got sound. That's a good sign. So it's just going to be the CD, DA stuff we're missing. I didn't start. That's weird. Oh, no, it's down. I don't get that. That's weird. Not sure what happened there. I think maybe you had to go into the folder and then you choose to start it. I think that's what happens. That loaded incredibly quick. That's way quicker than uh, normal CD. Wow, look at the load times there. That's incredible. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Yeah, so no CD audio look. But hopefully we should have sound. Yeah, sweet. So, I just need my little uh, 
wired, aren't I? A three pin wire. I know you jump now, it's a separate button, isn't it? I'm trying to do it right hand only, single hand. But you can see that is working, so yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I think that was well worth doing. Normally, I kind of quite like to keep the CD systems going, but the Neo Geo, the laser replacements you get from China, they're just awful. They really are. So even if you get one up and running like I have, it's not quite as good as it would have been with one of the original lasers that they shipped with. You know, no matter how much you dial it in for those lasers, replacement lasers, they're never quite as good as the originals. So I'll uh, get a load more games on this uh, card now and have a bit of a play and I'll report back. Right, so in order to get the CD audio working, you can see what I've done here. The three pin connector here, I've just soldered it because it's not long enough. Now, depending on the revision of your Neo CD, you won't or may or may not need to do this. And as you can see, what I've done is just extended it a little bit here. So these three wires here, I'm going to solder onto that PCB. So this will come off. I'm going to add some heat shrink on here. I've done this to retain the connector. If someone wanted to revert this mod and solder that back on the motherboard, they could do. I've not damaged it in any kind of way. So I've got some heat shrink around there now. Shrink that down. But then this then should reach right out to clip onto the SD loader board. So I'll show you where we're at with this. Uh, I've made some interesting progress. Let's just pull this lid off carefully. Uh, you can see there is a space to mount it here. Now, I'm just thinking, can I drill a hole? Yeah, I could. I could drill a hole through there. Let me just slide this across and mount it onto that post there. And then it will fit tidily inside as a kind of solid state storage device because I'm never going to be changing the games on this card. I may at some point come in here to put Xeno Crisis on it, but it's got the whole library on the card there. You can see once you've bent this up, you can't bend it back down easily. You need to desolder it and bend the pins individually and then, you know, put it back on there. So, yeah, there's mileage in thinking about what you want to do. Do you want it to replace the main drive? Or would you prefer to do what I'm going to do here, which is to drill a hole through there and mount, you know, put another screw there and just mount it like that and leave it permanently installed. Now, th this is as a consequence of realising that I can actually leave the CD drive connected up, actually. I need to do a further mod because whilst I've got the audio, you can just about see the, the join there, the bit of heat shrink. The audio joined from, you know, this PCB here, it normally comes down to the connector there. It's not connected at the moment, it's going straight to the SD loader on the underside here. I need to do something with that connector there because that is where the digital audio comes out of the you know motherboard so it's come from the drive into the motherboard comes out here normally it would go to the back here to the DAC you can see the DAC there now I worked that out myself with a little bit of uh, deduction uh, basically Fertec was telling me to give me three pins as you need to connect uh, these three pins one's D0, one's clock and one's something else I don't know I'll put them up there in a sec I'll show you the screenshot of the the wiring diagram has shown me. Basically, what we need to do is there's a pin on the Neo SD loader that uh, I think goes uh, low when you want to use the onboard CD ROM drive. So, using that signal, yeah, if we tap a wire off that signal, we can use uh, either a 245. 74HC245 or 74HC125, which is what Fertex suggested uh, I use, a quad uh, buffer, you know, it's a quad buffer, and feed those three signals through the buffer, and then when that uh, signal goes low to say you want to use the built-in drive, it passes the data through. So, you know, when you're not using the built-in drive, using the SD loader, that signal will be high, and it won't allow the connections from here, these three signals, to go through to the Neo SD loader because it's got two th those three pin connections isn't it for the uh, digital audio and that should mean they've got the best of both worlds I should have the CD drive and the Neo SD loader and I'll show you uh, in a minute you can actually exit back out of the you know the custom BIOS that comes with the SD loader to your normal BIOS you know the one that was built in and I think he's dumping that I know it's that on the SD card there's a ROM uh, I think something like original ROM or something like that so I think he's dumping that very early on at the start on the, when it first powers up and it you know, does the firmware update so uh, yeah it uses that ROM you can use the CD-ROM drive this would be uh, connected up to here effectively you know obviously via the SD loader board through a buffer 
which uh, I need to sort out. Uh, and before I got to that conclusion, obviously you could see here, you could mount it here and it's perfect, but this edge here interferes with this here. So, you know, I'm not really sure, you know, this is why I then went, okay, well, let's try it doing that, and that works. Um, so the one observation I would make there, and I don't know whether all Neo CDs are this way, I wonder if this some way this board could be flipped so that it's mounted like that, this way. Does that make sense? Because if that was the case, you could literally just screw it in there now, using all three mounts, and it would be rock solid, and you wouldn't have an issue. Yeah, this is internal, but like I say, in my case, that's what I want. That's what I'm going with. But uh, if you look at the service manual for a C64, the part, breakdown of all the parts, the screws that hold the board in, that's what I'm using. Because obviously there are no screws for these points here. Now, because this matches the same drive mount, I'm curious as to what the original intentions with this uh, space here. Ah, oh, it's not going to fit there, look. That's uh, it's catching. And there, ah, oh, that is a pain. Yeah, the simple solution there is this br brace here can use this bracket, this support. It's just catching the SD adapter here. So actually, if I just uh, cut a tiny little piece out of the top of that, then it will be okay. Yeah, there we go. So I snipped uh, into the side and then just snipped upwards. And you will see now, if I just uh, put that in position, look, it fits perfectly. No issues at all. I'm amazed that the uh, dimensions are the same as the drive mount here. It makes me wonder if they planned an option to have the drive on this side when they were designing it. Yeah, look at that. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. So what we can do is just put a slight crease there into that ribbon. And then it's not too tall. That's not going to be a problem. I don't think this here is going to catch because the mechanism stuff's quite a long way above that. There you go, you can see it's working. No issues at all. So I'm just echoing points I said when I've uh, done teardowns of these before, I think. These flex ribbons here, be very careful with them. And the fewer times you connect and disconnect these, the better. Because on this edge here, on this one, I noticed that when I connected it before, no problems went on all right. And then I took it off and I inspected, as I always do. And I noticed that one of the uh, traces there had started to peel back a bit. So I'm being very cautious here now. You know, you can straighten them back out, flatten them down. You could even just trim a little bit at the end of the connector off, but uh, it's only you're only going to get away with that so many times. So I haven't had to cut anything off this or anything, but like I say, one of the connections on here is not that great. Uh, so, And I saw the same thing when we looked at Scott's Neo Geo CD. I'll stick a link up there to that. Um, it's a crusty video, but it's uh, perhaps worth checking out. So if we now connect up the uh, CD unit here, now bear in mind the main thing, we're, the one thing we're missing at the moment, uh, it's the same with this, just to make sure that's uh, nice and the edges are straight and then try and feed it in as straight as you can, hopefully you won't bend any of the things on it. Uh, let's just get the lid back on. Sorry, I interrupted myself there, yeah, the thing we're missing here is the digital audio from the CD. So the lid is sat perfectly there, so let's stick in uh, Samurai Slowdown. Um, I can show you the uh, loading time difference here, so switch it on. Now it doesn't go straight to the CD, it goes into the loader, which is uh, what I'll be using 90% of the time. Uh, I think, is it D? Yeah, D. You can just about see up there there's some options, and you press D, so that should go straight to the CD. Now I'm not sure if the lid is down enough to trick the sensor, well not trick the sensor, but you know, detect that the drive is shut, let's see. Oh yeah, it has, because it's as though wait for a moment. Normally you won't get that if it doesn't detect the disc, so it's detecting the disc, and I'm hit start, and that should start loading, Samurai Slowdown. Samurai Showdown 2 I think it is actually. Wow, that took an incredible amount of time, uh, a minute, over a minute I would say, maybe two minutes. Um, but you can see, you know, it's all got no music, and that's because the CD uh, digital audio is missing, I think. So let's uh, just power cycle that, we'll go back into the menu, we'll load it from the SD card, and I'll do the same thing, I'll fast forward it and just show you how long it took. Yeah, it's that one.
can see how much faster that is already. That is just crazy fast. And there are no pauses and things, obviously, because there's no seeking to tracks on the disc and things like that. It'll just continuously stream in as fast as it possibly can. That's just incredibly fast. There's no music there, actually, but maybe there's no music on the title screen, so that wasn't a good example, but there is here. You can hear that. I know for a fact, though, if we uh, boot the uh, actual CD version of this, that music is not there, because I obviously need that little chip and the cable and stuff attaching for that to get the uh, onboard CD audio working. But that's sweet. We're using composite here, by the way, so, yeah, if it looks fuzzy, it's because it is. Before the video ends, I'll go and get my uh, AES RGB cable out, because that works with this. You'll be able to see how much uh, cleaner it is, but obviously that's got no bearing on this mod at all. Sweet. Right, so here's the schematic from Furtec. So you can see he's suggested using a 74HC125, which is a quad, uh, a bus transceiver. You know, it's not really a transceiver, because it's, it's one direction, this. It's just a buffer. That's all it is. So you have an input, if you see this little triangle here, you've got an input to its base and an output. But then you've got the uh, signal here that controls it, you know, like the output enable, effectively. Uh, so, yeah, there's quite a few wires there. But it is a case of, you know, three one is going to uh, the one of the connectors so it doesn't matter which of these two connectors here you use for the purpose of you know from the motherboard or to the back connector thing there you know they're both in parallel you know pin one goes to pin one two to two three to three um, but anyway we use this one because this is the one uh, that's uh, free at the moment one over here I've got the connector clipped onto to you know feed the audio out to the uh, the DAC actually. So instead of using this chip 125 I'm going to go with the 245 you can see it here I've got a SOP2 dip adapter. The reason I've gone with this is it's, I already have one and uh, it'll be dead easy to solder that on there. And I can then just tap the wires off to the various places. So I'll have you know, three wires uh, here coming from the, you know, the motherboard effectively. Uh, and then the other three wires going to here. Obviously I need a ground and VCC. I'm going to tap those off somewhere on the actual motherboard itself. And I'll uh, use a sticky double sided pad. and. Uh, you know, sponge thing, it'll be sponge like and stick that onto the motherboard. So that should be alright. And the wiring might not get as scary as this because where we've got all these the, the loop backs here to the various things because of um, the select signals, we won't have that because the 245 is much easier. So I've got some flux on there, I've tacked the corners, we get a little bit of solder. Uh, which one did I tack now? Oh, it's this uh, bottom right here. I will start from the opposite side uh, and we'll just have a drag along here. I've not really got the right tip here, in fact I definitely haven't got the right tip here, you can see it's just all gone on there and hasn't gone anywhere else. Oh you got to start to distribute a little bit, look. Got a bridge there. So yeah, you can see we've done one side there, let's just clean that up a bit. But the nice thing with this adapter is we've got the points here to tap wires off. So we'll just uh, clean all the flux off that now. I know we're going to be soldering these wires here, but they're not going to leave lots of sticky chip quick flux like that there. So anyway, it just makes it cleaner to handle as well. You can see this adapter does the smaller size, is it SSOP? I think it is. So yeah, they're nice those little adapters, they're always useful for things like this. So as you can see I've mounted it on this chip here, it's well and truly stuck down that, using a double sided pad on the, uh, is that, I'm not sure which chip that is, it's not the GRC, GRC's up there. Anyway, that's nice and secure, it's not going anywhere. Short cable here that again is detachable, it's a four pin one, can you see it's hanging over but there's nothing in that fourth connection. But uh, I want it to be different anyway, you know, we want it to be unique to this connector here, so I'm never going to get that the wrong way around, am I? Let's face it, it's not long enough to go over here. Uh, and the ground and VCC from a 74 uh, HC245 up there. So the only thing we need now is another cable. I've got the connector here. <clears throat> now I've ordered some new uh, connectors with wires so maybe I could replace this whole thing but I'm going to need to extend this with three wires it wants to go from the motherboard here to three 
uh, pins on here so that's the, the the next thing i need to do and the final thing is going to be to take away from here it's going to be very fine soldering uh yeah i'm going to need magnification to find that i'll probably use the wire that he provided which is super fine stuff here it's thinner than the kind of that i use about a quarter of the size actually uh, and feed to the output enable on this I've got the direction pin fed with uh, 5 volts using some of that fine wire you can just see a little strand of it going there because the direction pin is up here um, and then that should work you know if we plug this cable in it should work so this morning I had to do some changes I couldn't get it working last night the first thing that happened after I powered it on I had uh, no screen at all just a black screen and i was like oh my god what have i wired up wrong here what i didn't realize is the wire on the uh, connection on here the chip select for the rom had come off so that was the issue there and then i was getting crackling cd audio now i disconnected this and the sound was back again from the loader so i knew there was something wrong with this and this is the bit that was puzzling me it's been, i spent ages trying to understand it and you know what it was the diagram let me show you this diagram here i made a mistake look at that diagram so pin one is uh, pin one is up here but look at the way the print is the notch is up here the print is the wrong way around so of course i started wearing it according to the print here i was assuming that that's the vcc and that's ground it isn't so i got the vcc in the ground the right way but what i didn't do is the direction i had it coming across here to um the end pin I think, I think i think i thought the direction pin was on the end and i was connecting to vcc i wasn't i was connecting one of the inputs here to vcc and uh, yeah so I'd, what i've done now is tied the corner pin down here is the direction pin i've t tied that to vcc that's what that yellow wire there is and then the output enable instead of being connected over here to this uh, pin down here it needs to go to the second pin next to the VCC here, you know, so it's the second one along, VCC is there, it's the next one along, and that's what that wire is here, and it comes to pin 14 of this little quad flat pack. Uh, the way I did that, I don't think I filmed it, I put a little bit of caps and tape over the left side, a bit on the right side, just leaving a pin width of gap in between, so yeah, it was a really fiddly to do that. Again, a little bit of hot melt glue would be uh, ideal, so I might do that, stick a bit here or something just to hold that down, I'll do that in a minute. But uh, right now, I want to go and test it. So I've connected everything back up again. Hopefully, we should now be able to connect the CD drive. And we should get audio, uh, you know, CD digital audio from both the loader and the drive. You can see this captain tape was a good idea here because it's got twisted and mangled. You know, that's the point where the, the thing goes on. So had I not stuck this bit of captain tape right around there, I think that this would have been damaged already just from the way it gets twisted, you know, because it comes like that there to the, the loader when it's inside. It's pretty tight here on the uh, case. So it's been one thing after another after another with us because I had the uh, chip flipped there on that diagram I was looking at the wrong way up I got the A and the B mixed up which means the direction pin wants to go to ground not VCC so that the direction has passed the correct way. Uh, I'll stick as an anna some annotations up or a diagram in a minute just to show you how I wired that. Bear in mind, if you buy one of these Neo SD loaders, the latest revision I think has got this functionality on board, so you don't need to worry about this uh, bodgy board I've added here. Um, but I'm insistent on trying to get the CD drive working with it as well. Yeah, this pin, the wire here broke off again. Just because the pins are so small, you have the smallest, smallest bit of solder. So if you haven't secured these things with hot glue, which I will do in a minute, I promise. Uh, it's very easy just from a touch. You can detach the solder connection, just like I did on the BIOS earlier on. Anyway, hopefully, now I've got that the right way around, as long as the ribbons are still good, and, uh, yeah, they seem to be, you know, you've got to be really careful with these, because they start to fold up, if you're not careful, from a number of insertions and removals. Uh, anyway, let's just get that side back on. The way I've been doing these to avoid that, because one or two of these, as I say, did start to peel back, is to do that before you start, just to make sure the the down and the not sticking out in any kind of way. And then you can see the blue side here, and I'm kind of like flapping it into the connect. Hang on, like that, so that the edge of them is flat, and then raise it a little bit straight upward, and then just push very carefully straight down like that. So I have to sort of pull it like this to get the edge in and then slide it a little bit like that. You can see that's in place. Use this on the blue part here. Just pull, see that? Is that going to go in? Look, there you go. Rock it one way and then the other. You have to be careful though, you don't want to 
there we go, break it or damage it. So there are a few people that this diagram is going to apply to because if you buy the latest version from Furtech, you've got this stuff built on. It's just literally connect the connectors up and you're done. You don't need to worry about anything. Uh, but it's here nevertheless. There might be somebody out there who's fitted a rev seal like this who thinks, oh, I wouldn't mind actually fitting the CD drive back into my unit. Well, now you can do this if you do it the way I've done it. So the 74HC245 pin one uh, notch is here. You can see the little uh, semicircle. So uh, like all 74 series chips, VCC goes to the Upmost pin there, ground goes to the far furthest pin on the same side as pin one. That's ground. The direction signal is connected to that ground as well, and that means that data will pass from uh, B to A. If that makes sense. So, this connector here, I've got it connected to three of the B inputs here. I've used like B4, B5, and B6. I didn't use B7, I just wanted to stay away from that end because when they pass through to here, it means that the three pins I can leave a gap there and I'm not messing around near soldering near the ground wire if that makes sense. So, that's probably not making any sense at all. This first wire here, for example, is B4, and B4 will go to A4, and A4 happens to be that one, which is the fifth one from the right hand side here. You've got ground. B7, I think, B6, uh, sorry, A7, A6, A5, A4. So B4 connects to A4. So all this is doing is it's like a gate, if you like. You've got three wires coming in. If the output enable goes low, then the signals pass through to the three A connections. Yeah, the first one there goes to the first one there, the second one to the second one, the third one to the third one. Only when the signal goes low. The output signal here comes from pin 14 on that uh, Neo SD loader IC. The way this works obviously is when the CD drive is working, the loader puts this signal low there, so it's output, it's, you know, it's output enable is low, which means that this can then pass data from the motherboard side, because the way it works is the CD feeds the audio into the motherboard, comes out with a three pin connector on the motherboard, in through here, through these three connections, and then this comes into the Neo SD. Now the Neo SD is not actually doing anything active with the signals there, those three signals, the two connectors you saw on the Neo SD board there, you've got two that are marked CD, DA, one on the left side of the board, one on the right, they're joined in parallel, so effectively all you're doing is you're passing through here into the Neo CD board, it goes all the way to the other connector on the Neo CD board which goes back out to the DAC which is fitted on the back board there that fits inside the Neo CD. Does that make sense? So the Neo SD loader when using the CD drive is not doing anything at all apart from passing the signal through the normal routes that it would take and of course when this signal here goes high this chip is no longer outputting here so this link, this bridge between these three connections is no longer in place and the other connector on the Neo SD, the other CD DA connector is directly connected to the DAC on the back PCB, you know, that sits there on the back of the Neo Geo. So the actual physical CD is loading. Now there's none there. I think you only get it when you actually go into a game or in the intro here, perhaps. Yes! Sweet! <laughs> Working fine. And power cycling that, as you can see, we go back to the main menu. This is really sweet. I'm kicking myself I didn't get around to doing this sooner because this is wonderful. It really is amazing. Furtech, if I've not already mentioned, is one of those people that I hold in very high regard, right up there with the likes of Stephen Leary and Dave Jones, uh, you know, really um, experienced engineers. Furtech has been reverse engineering a lot of the stuff to do with the Neo Geo, but also some of the other arcade boards as well. Let's try a Neo CD Special, whatever that is. Neo Geo CD Special. I'm not even aware of what this is. It's all in Japanese, look. But yeah, this is amazing. As I say, I cut myself off. Furtech is amazing. He is absolutely amazing. I'll post some links down below to his Patreon. You can support Furtech, and uh, as I say, what he's doing is decapping some of the chips on Neo Geo boards or their arcade boards and reverse engineering them. You may think, where's the benefit in doing that, reverse engineering these chips? Well, A, emulation can be improved, but mainly FPGA cores, you know, things like the Mister, a lot of the stuff in the Mister to the Neo Geo has come from Furtech. So, 
you know, he's keeping the hardware alive for future generations because all these chips ultimately will die. But also, that's resulted in him producing things like, uh, you remember the Neo Buff and Neo Guff board I produced? That was done at the same time as Fertet was working on his. But since then, he's gone to produce many other chips, some of which you'll see in a later video. But not only that, he's creating amazing things like this. This is just wonderful. One thing I have noticed, uh, I'm not sure if I pressed something there. Can you see that it says no files found? That's one glitch I have. Hang on, they showed up then. That's one glitch I have had with this. Just occasionally you'll switch it on. And uh, it either says a number, like 2573 or something, and that's it. And you're like, well, what's that number? Where is there no other files listed? But then you just power cycle and it seems okay. Look, they're all back again. But that could just be a glitch with the latest firmware. The latest firmware is so good at load times, though. It's so fast, it's unbelievable. Let's try some Sonic Wings. Sweet. Stage 10. But anyway, you can see that's working. And we do have CD audio. Now, interestingly, I did get a disk I.O. error there. It says, please power off. I'm not sure if that's a copy protection thing or what. That was Art of Fighting 3. So it might be that Vertex not doing anything in the BIOS to do with copy protection checks. What's actually happening here is it's done by the game itself. So when people say these early Neo CDs have no copy protection, that is not true. It's actually the game that is the issue here. Because what we're doing here is we're using obviously this original system here, one of the first gen that allegedly doesn't have copy protection, and playing a game that does have in-game copy protection. And the check is failing because the dump has not got, well, it's been error corrected, hasn't it? Read on the wiki. Uh, again, it's probably come from Fertech, this, or someone uh, Fertech knows, I'm sure. Um, the way the copy protection works is errors are written to the original, you know, the mastered onto the original disc, just some a couple of errors on a particular part of the disc. And when you copy it using a PC, you know, modern PC or hardware, you know, people would be using a CD-ROM drive and a PC to copy something like this. It does error correction, and it corrects those two errors, and then, of course, the code either on boot or in-game is checking to see if those errors exist. Uh, I think there's a couple of bytes that uh, should be wrong and they're not. So that was Robo Army and I played it for four or five minutes, got through the end of the level there, at the end of the first level and you saw that screen. And I think with Art of Fighting 3 it was giving me a disc read error, which uh, it could be copy protection, it could be the dump. But I put a different version of Art of Fighting 3 on here and uh, that's got the protection bypassed, the in-game protection, and it works okay. So, yeah, if I said there was no protection on these when I uh, looked at these in the past, this version of the Neo CD, that is not true. There was no C as far as I can see, there's no protection built into the actual system, but it is capable of detecting the protection when it's run from the software, you know, from the game, from the disc. And here's another example of the copy protection stuff you can expect. So this is on the Super Sidekicks 3, but I need to replace about 20 odd games in here, I think, that have got these in-game protection checks. But this could lead you to think that there's a problem with your system, either if you've burnt a disc and you're trying to you know, use it on the CD drive, or if you're actually trying to use an SD loader like I am here. Here's another example on Fatal Fury 3. So I've gone through nearly all the games here, I think. I don't think there are any I've missed. And the only game I've got a problem with is King of Fighters 97. I could probably show you that. You get like a corruption with loads and comes up with an error. And I've tried a few different ISOs. It's commonly thought that copy protection is only employed on the CDZ. Well, that isn't the case. Uh, so King of Fighters 97 is, is one of those games actually. So I found a tutorial online, I'll post a link down below, to how to modify this game. So you have to open the track track one with uh, I don't know something like Magic ISO or something similar, where you can you know manipulate ISO files and things and uh, deal with the individual files on a track. But I did that for King of Fighters Night Seven. I extracted the .bin file, you know, all the files that are comprised within that first track on the CD, and I found the PRG file, the main one that gets loaded that has the copy protection, and I loaded it into a hex editor modified a couple of bytes and saved it back, and that bypassed the copy protection on that game. But, as you'll see, despite that, and I've tried a few different ISOs as I have, 
try three different ISOs here. Uh, another one that was well, had the protection removed from somewhere else. One that still had the protection and the same problem happens on all three of them. If I go into uh, game start, you'll see somewhere here in a second when you start the initial load, you'll get an error. So I think this is a firmware thing, but it could be that all the dumps are bad. So I select characters. See that there? Yeah, I'll zoom in, but it says Neo CD SD loader error 01 0902-something. And can you see these corruptions down here? So that's the first sign that there's an issue with this particular game. But as I say, it could be the dump. I'm honestly not sure. So the game seems to work okay, but some point after, I don't know, three or four rounds or so, you just get a black screen and it just freezes. Now, you may think that's the copy protection, but I don't think it is. I think the copy protection on this will give you an I.O. error if you've not disabled it. Well, anyway, the game works all right. It's also worth pointing out, to the menu, it's also worth pointing out, I had quite a lot of time, I'm talking like two days of time, spent messing with ISO. So when you get some of the ISOs for some of these games, you'll find that some of them have got the individual WAV files for the audio tracks. Others, it's merged into a single, you know, dot .bin file for that, you know, you've got a whole disk with all of the tracks, the data track, track one, and then all of the audio files all merged within one bin file. And for the most part, that's not an issue. On some of the protected games, like Real Bout, for example, these three here in particular, I spent quite a while messing with them. The version you'll find online that's got the protection removed the audio tracks are messed up in here. I am not sure why. I have a look at the cue sheet. There's some weird stuff in the cue sheet that might be messing up the parser uh, in the SD loader. So what I ended up doing there was sort of build my own ISO really by you know creating a hybrid of uh, the, the protection removed track one, remove the audio stuff from that binary file, save that as you know, track one then pull in the WAV files from the other version of the game and create a, a Q file that matches, that marries everything up. And that works. I got Real Bout, Real Bout Fatal Fury 2 and Real Bout Fatal Fury Special all working perfectly. The audio tracks are fine, the protection is uh, removed. And it wasn't just those three games, there were about six or seven or maybe eight games I had to do that on. It was a case of, uh, you know, a bit of trial and error of going into each game testing it. Uh, some games, the audio, you'll notice it's playing the wrong track at the wrong time or it starts mid-audio track. That's a sign there's something wrong with the cue sheet, probably. Samurai Spirits RPG is on the list of known issues at the moment. Furtech is aware that you can't load that game. If it uh, start that game, I'll show you. It will start to load and then you just end up with a black screen at the end of it. So it would be nice if we can get that working, but then again, it's all kanji, you know, Japanese text there. So unless you can read Japanese, you're not going to be able to play it. But uh, maybe people will uh, mod this. I know that there was there's a couple of translations being in the works. You see, that, see that's frozen? Just frozen there. Yeah, there were a couple of projects to translate it. But uh, yeah, now I've first seen the actual files on the disc. I might have a go at doing that, actually. I don't know. I'm not so sure it's going to be easy. But you can extract all of the data files, you know, the actual files that it loads individually like the sprite files and the program files and everything. So yeah, I would imagine with a lot of work someone could uh, translate that to English and that would just be amazing. This is the adapter I was going to show you. So you can see you've got like an SD card here, going to a flex ribbon, goes to uh, an adapter. Now the problem with something like this, let me just show you the length. This is crazy long, like, I don't know, a metre long almost. It's not far off a metre. So of course with length like that, you're going to get deterioration on the signal quality. Let's give it a try anyway to see if it works. And it's not just about noise being picked up on the length there, it's probably about uh, voltage drop as well I would think. So hang on a minute, that goes that way, so this is going to go there, like that, that's in. If we get the SD card in, which way does it go, is it that way? I think it's that way. Oh it's a clicky one, look. Now I've got the firmware update still on there, I've just realised, so it's, uh, it delays the boot a little bit. Let's just see if that works. Wow, it did work. I'm shocked at that, actually. Because it is crazy long. So, I could use that adapter outside the case if I wanted. Wow, it seems to have loaded.
Yeah, I mean, that changes things for me now because I'm thinking maybe I might actually use that extender and mount the uh, adapter outside the, the Neo CD. Yeah, you've got slowdown in this version of Metal Slug 2, but there is Metal Slug 2 Turbo, as you may have seen in the list there. So I think someone's taking the same turbo mod that was applied to the MVS and AES, and uh, you know, obviously merged it into the CD version. I'll try some more games and I'll report back. So I tested a good uh, dozen or so games there, and everything's working alright with that extender. So uh, yeah, your mileage may vary, because I did read on the Neo Geo forums, some people have had problems with these extenders actually. So to get back to the main menu, you hold down A, B, C and just tap start, and it pulls you back to the main menu. I may as well show you some of the other settings in here. So in the main menu you can press A to load a game, left, right and up, down to navigate the menu here, select a game. You can press C for options, and in this menu you can see you've got settings, so you can change the region here, you know, Japanese, uh, Europe, Brazil, interestingly, I didn't know there was a Brazil region for this, but yeah, we'll do it on USA. You can also change the debug dip switch settings there, and put it in dev mode. Some of those dip switches you would need to change into dev mode in order to enable them. Putting it in debug mode may give you things like infinite lives or being able to select a level, the sort of things that a developer would have wanted to do when they were developing the game. So idle LED, you can change the colour of it there, that's interesting, and loading LED. I haven't got the LED fitted, I'll show you where that goes in a minute. A screensaver, so you can enable a screensaver and sound effects, let's enable that. B to exit. Yeah, you can hear there, when we press a button, we now get a sound. D takes you into the CD menu as normal, you know, if you've still got the original CD drive connected. So I showed you that working before. So the other thing you can do in the options menu, you'll see that you've got a saves menu. If you press that, that takes you into the normal memory manager where you can, you know, display all your saves. You can see you've got Ninja Masters, Metal Slug, Metal Slug 2, etc. Uh, and you can obviously delete those, you can format your card, etc. Uh, five, let's do end. So that's going to reboot it, I think, isn't it? You can press A to skip the uh, title thing there, that's nice because it just speeds up the initial load there. But if we go back into there again, you've also got store saves and load saves. So this is really nice uh, as well, you give it a file name and it will save the, obviously all of those saves as one file onto the SD card. Uh, how do we get out of that now? Exit, let's just do exit. And then you can obviously load your saves as well, so if you've got you know a, a file that you've previously saved there, you can load it up, which means you've got no more limitations on the save RAM, because the save RAM is going to be something like 32K or something, isn't it? It might be a bit smaller than that, I'm not sure, but yeah, I think it's got a 62256 or something like that on there. It might have two, like the uh, MVS, but you're no longer limited with the amount of game save space. And the about screen just shows you the uh, versions of different uh, things here and some credits at the bottom there and obviously you can see it's manufactured by Furtech Engineering. And with version 0.7 you can see down here it says press select and start to get in-game menu. Anyway, if you press select and start you'll see there you get a menu just like you do with a, a Unibars. So we can do uh, Infinite Lives, let's try that. This is a new feature so some games I've noticed like World Heroes for example just going into the menu can cause some corruptions in the graphics. They do reset at the end of the round, but uh, the point I'm trying to make is it's a work in progress, the uh, cheats feature here, and it'll probably get improved with uh, each version of uh, firmware update. Let's just save for his life, I'm the lines of a guard, there are two ships there, top left, let's try and kill myself. I've still got one life, hang on, what's going on here now? Yeah, so you can see that cheat doesn't work. So yeah, some work is needed on the cheat section, but uh, yeah, it's a work in progress. So if, like me, you do decide to use something like this, and I hadn't planned on keeping this in there, but you know what? I can just have that sat at the back there, and it just makes it really easy. Yeah, this is subject to damage, but you know what? They're pretty cheap, three or four pounds. Easy to replace if you did need a new one. And you can see, it just fits nicely in the gap there. There's no problems, it went, look, I'll show you. It goes nicely over there 
without doing anything, any damage to anything. So that will do me, I think. So if you saw the repair of this Neo Geo CD, and I'll post the link up there if I haven't done already, uh, we have stuck a label on here to say uh, Samurai Slowdown because, yeah, it was very slow. This is one thing that people don't like about the top loader. It's slow compared to something like the CDZ. But you know what? I don't think that applies anymore. So rather than remove the label, just draw a red line through there because it's now a Samurai. <laughs> it's not slow at all. I'm going to go stage further as well, actually, just to uh, mark this more appropriately. Not only is it now no longer slow, uh, it's uh, fast and furious. <laughs> I've made that word up, as in the fast and furious film there. Uh, furry, as in furtech with a double R. So, yeah, it's super fast now, and it's a samurai. So, the only other issue that I've noticed, and I can show you this, if I power cycle it, switch it back on. First time you play a digital audio track you get like a click. Now I pointed this out to Furtech and uh, I've mentioned I think what's probably happening is the first few bits or bytes is perhaps incorrect so maybe it needs a pull down or something so that when the digital audio is switched on maybe by its output enable or something when it first starts to output some digital audio um, hold on, let's just load real bow again. Um, yeah, maybe the first byte or bit is the incorrect state. You know, for what the DAC's expecting. It's a bit like the issue you get with PCM, whereas if you don't get the format right, you'll get little clicks and squeaks and things. So if I start this, just listen. Didn't do it there. That's interesting, it's not consistent. Maybe it's a timing thing. Did it there, there was a little click. I'll rewind that and amplify it, but that was quite a quiet click. Often it's quite loud, but it, it's really hard to replicate. I must have loaded about 10 different times there from power on and uh, couldn't get it to do it. Well, full disclosure here, I had to tear it down again. This, uh, the CD drive was working. I was like, what's going on here? Why is the CD drive now not working? And I noticed the, the laser, you can see with the lenses here, it was only ever here. It was never going up the disc. Now, it would tell you the table of contents and say, you know, the disc is, I don't know, 68 minutes long and there's 20 tracks. And that's it. You couldn't play anything. You couldn't start a game. It was driving me to despair trying to understand what was actually going on. I thought maybe something had died on the uh, CD control board here. But I haven't just uh, tried to move this, just to show you, hang on, watch. As soon as you get here, can you see there's a bit of something stuck on there? It sticks. And as soon as you go around the other way, it gets there, look, it sticks. There's something on there. Now, I don't think it's a broken tooth. I think there's a bit of dirt somehow got into the thing here, and it's wedged between, look. So you can see I've just uh, soldered a JST socket onto there, where the LED goes. So I've ordered an LED, it won't be covered in this video. I'm sure I'm going to be going back in here at some point. So we can revisit that when the uh, LED arrives. You need a common anode three-color LED. You can see on the board there, can you see the silk screen? R, G, B, C, A. The common anode is on the right. I've got the male connector to go into that. You can see here, obviously the wires are chopped off, but I'll uh, you know solder some wires on, extend it out, and uh, fit it somewhere on the inside where it's going to be visible. But I'll leave the original power LEDs red down there. So, we are finally all done. And as you can see, I've got my SD adapter at the back here. If I want, I could shorten the ribbon, put more of the ribbon inside, but I want a little bit of length on there. And it's working perfectly. Absolutely fantastic. Furtec has done an amazing job with this. I have to apologise to Furtec because, as I said at the start, I've been sat on this since probably spring, April, ish I think. I'm very grateful though. Now he sent me this free of charge but I've been paying uh, Patreon support and I'll continue to pay Patreon support to Furtech until I've more than paid for this as a way to say thank you for this and to pay for it effectively so that's one reason I haven't marked this video in any kind of way to say it's uh, paid uh, content or whatever, you know, because it isn't. He's provided this, but I am paying him and I will continue to pay him until I've paid more than he actually uh, provided it for. And I'll, uh, I'll just continue that into the future anyway. Yeah, so it's hard not to look up to someone like Furtec. He's a very, very, very clever guy. 
So anyway, hopefully you found that interesting. If you'd like to purchase one of these Neo SD loaders, I'll post some links down below. As I said earlier on, the latest versions, you won't have to do the, the bodge that I did there with that little PCB to get the built-in CD drive still working. You know, the to support the CD digital audio there, it works on the latest version without that. And the firmware is an evolution in process. I'm sure over the next year or so, we'll see more updates to fix one or two of the little things. Uh, there are literally two or three little things. You know, the cheeks were working worthy on Pulsar. Uh, the issue with Kingfire is 97, and uh, Samurai Showdown doesn't currently work. But I would assume, like I say, give him some time. He's a very busy guy. We'll probably see some firmware updates to fix one or two of those things in the upcoming uh, months. So I do hope you found the video interesting. If you'd like to support the channel, please see the Patreon coffee links down below. Special thanks to all my Patreons uh, and everyone that subscribes and comments on my videos. But without Patreon support, the channel wouldn't be able to continue. So I'm very grateful to people that uh, certainly in the last uh, month or two have increased the pledges, if anything, which has helped with some of the people we've lost. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Catch you in the next one.